China's rich are racking their brains to find ways to move their wealth overseas. But for the huge number of ordinary white-collar workers in China who cannot migrate abroad, what are they planning for themselves? Once upon a time, these white-collar workers lived their lives like this, drinking coffee at work, traveling when they could, writing poetic descriptions of their moods on social media in their spare time, more or less showing off their sense of superiority. But now they have become more realistic and are paying close attention to prices, seizing every opportunity to buy expiring food and drinks at deep discounts. Some of them have even started to buy food trimmings. The rapid expansion of the blind box industry in China's food market clearly shows white-collar workers' consumption trend. Blind boxes contained food left in retail stores from that day, packaged and sold at a great discount in store or online. Because the store can't predict what will be left, it is called a blind box. Consumers don't know what's in the boxes. The blind box is random in its content and can't be returned for refunds. Under the strict Communist Party's outbreak lockdown. Factories and distributors stuck with high inventories are eager to eliminate their inventories, which drives the blind box industry. Blind boxes offer a cheap option, making them quickly popular among students and white collar workers. Chinese media reported that when a reporter visited a bakery in the affluent city of Hangzhou in eastern China, a clerk randomly picked up a blind bag and handed it to the reporter. The blind bag sold for about one U.S. dollar and seventy-six cents, and contained a box of coconut crisp tart, originally priced at three U.S. dollars and thirty-two cents, and a box of crepes, originally priced at two U.S. dollars and thirty cents. It was equivalent to getting thirty percent off. The two products still had a shelf life of two days and ten days, respectively. Look, this is a Chinese online shopping platform, Taobao. It's well stocked with all sorts of blind boxes of food. This is the first blind box platform in China. It was launched a year ago and is now with retail stores in many big cities. Most stores offer blind boxes of bread. In Shanghai, there are two such platforms: Pack Age and DZZ. Their blind box types contain a mix of baked desserts, beverages like coffee, short dated fresh groceries, food to go items, deli items, and discounts from retail stores and supermarkets. The founder of Pack Age told the Chinese media that the current market size of the domestic catering industry was about four trillion RMB. Based on a 10% loss rate, the market size of blind food boxes was projected to be about 400 billion RMB, or roughly 60 billion U.S. dollars. Unlike their overseas counterparts, such online platforms in China generate revenue from charging promotional fees for brand discounts. Merchants are to sign up or sell food on the platform. Similar overseas platforms, such as Too Good to Go, are profitable by charging a 20% commission on transactions, merchant entry fees, and user membership fees. For the past 30 years, the blind box industry has been virtually non-existent in China, especially among the middle income class, because saving face is important to the Chinese. Most ordinary families would be too embarrassed to visit a supermarket that specializes in selling food products that are about to expire. But now, under the weight of life, saving face has given way to the need for survival. The price-performance ratio of the leftover food sold on the same day is delightful for many people. For example, one can get a coffee for one dollar fifty cents U.S. dollars, a deluxe bread set with six varieties for three dollars fifty cents U.S. dollars, or a giant pizza for five U.S. dollars. The price is quite tempting, considering a significantly diminished wallet. According to public records, in the past year, 119 new businesses specializing in expiring goods were registered in mainland China, compared to 92 such businesses in the past 10 years. Among the more famous ones, Hotmax has opened more than 400 chain stores. Hitgu has opened nearly 200 stores in the first year of its establishment. Shuno has opened 40 stores in six months. Chinese media reported that a Chinese student studying abroad developed a blind box food app after returning to Shanghai in 2021. On the app, users can purchase various expiring foods, including but not limited to bread and fitness meals in a blind box or at low prices with discounts. Mimi said, "Originally, I thought there was still some promotion to be done, but the amount of user growth has been rapid. It took in more than 200 food and beverage stores right after it went live." And the user group on WeChat filled up quickly.
During the outbreaks, our app helped merchants quickly move their food backlogs. Many chain merchants on the fence have also started reaching out to us now. In June this year, this app reached about 20,000 users. It has enough merchants to cover the entire Shanghai, basically. According to a chief researcher at a Guangzhou-based consulting firm, an alarming number of white-collar workers rely on fast-expiring food to make ends meet. The firm surveyed more than 1,600 buyers of soon-to-expire food in late 2021 and found that two-thirds of the respondents earned more than 4,000 renminbi per month or about 593 U.S. dollars, which is considered the threshold for low- and middle-income in China. Of course, 4,000 renminbi is a very low bottom line. In 2018, there was a hot topic on China's Zhihu website, an equivalent of Quora, a social question and answer website. A question was asked, what kind of life can you live in Hangzhou with a monthly salary of 10,000 renminbi? 10,000 renminbi is about 1,500 US dollars. Many replied with similar answers, to live a life of saving money. Netizens thinking along this line have recently coined a special term for themselves, Chief Saving Officer or CSO. Why did people reply with such answers? It's actually not difficult to understand. Many white-collar workers in Hangzhou live in a 10-meter squared partitioned room. They can only fit their dreams along with a bed and a desk. With a monthly salary of 10,000 renminbi, the mortgage alone takes up 8,000 renminbi. As a result of the changes in the global environment driven by the trade war between the United States and China, China's economy has exhibited signs of decay since 2018. At that time, China's exports were down, stocks were hit hard, and the Chinese currency renminbi suffered a significant devaluation, plus the exodus of foreign capital which had set off a wave of factory closures and layoffs. Moreover, the collapse of various P2P platforms in the domestic financial market, that is, peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms known as social lending and active lending or borrowing money directly from people rather than banks, have evaporated about 4.5 billion US dollars worth of deposits. All these factors drag the economy downward. From then on, the most hardworking group of people in China, the office workers, began to worry about losing jobs or getting pay cuts. They started focusing on how to save money, including cooking at home. Against the backdrop of reducing spending, cheap foods, such as preserved vegetables, started to gain popularity in China. For example, Fu Ling Jia Cai, a brand known for its preserved pickles, has enjoyed an 80% increase in its net profit compared to last year. Instant noodles have seen growing popularity as well. One such brand has its net profit surging by 90%. A liquor brand from Beijing that specializes in cheap, hard liquor doubled its net profit, surpassing the expensive liquor, Mao Tai. Mao Tai is known as the national liquor served at all communist state banquets and is frequently presented as a diplomatic gift. Sales of low-cost pickles, instant noodles, and cheap, hard liquor have all grown in popularity, illustrating that consumers are downgrading their spending. Also during the same period, the shopping platform Pinduoduo, which started in 2016 in rural China and specialized in selling low-priced goods or copycat counterfeits, quickly rose in 2018 to become a popular choice for urban office workers. Its slogan is buy together for less. In 2022, the repeated outbreaks have instilled a sense of urgency in white-collar workers to stock up during quarantine. In addition, in the face of the increased risk of unemployment, downward salary adjustments, and an outlook of a confusing future, saving money is virtually the only action one can take to feel safe. On July 11, 2022, the People's Bank of China released a report on financial statistics for the first half of 2022. The questionnaire survey report on urban depositors in the second quarter of 2022 showed that residents who tended to save more accounted for 58.3%, an increase from the previous quarter, up 3.6 percentage points. Only 17.9% of residents tended to invest more, down 3.7 percentage points from the previous quarter. How can ordinary people preserve and increase the value of their assets in the face of an economic downturn? 
A Chinese economist gave the answer in a social media post on Weibo. The most realistic goal for ordinary people should be to secure their existing wealth rather than think about making big money in troubled times. How arrogant should that be? You can't make money in a good economy, and you're thinking about changing your fortune in a bad economy? Chinese media have reported a few stories concerning the subject. For example, a Shanghai-based insurance broker now spends about 90 U.S. dollars a month on imported expiring drinks that would normally cost more than 150 U.S. dollars in a regular store. The 32-year-old said her income was unstable due to the zero COVID policy and the real estate crisis. So whatever I make, I try to scrimp as much as I can. And David Wong, owner of a discount food store in Beijing, said after Beijing banned dine-in services in April, he bought 5,000 cakes with a shelf life of less than a week from a global fast food chain for 20 renminbi, half the normal wholesale price. He sold them all for 30 renminbi within three days. II Media Research shows that snacks with a long shelf life such as potato chips and beef jerky are particularly popular. Other hot items include dairy products and instant foods that are nearly their expiry date. Consumers want to buy food that is about to expire because these products are of good quality but cheap, said Sean Ryan, head of China March Research, a Shanghai-based consultancy. People want to save as much money as possible. China is notorious for food safety. Blind box food is at even more risk. Their prices are fixed. The content is unobservable and unselectable, etc. The peroxide value of expiring foods is likely to be higher, and due to differences in storage environments, there may also be dampness and bacterial overload problems. Short shelf life foods such as milk and bread are sterilized, but not free from bacterial spores. They can grow into new bacteria, once ingested and accumulated to the point where the body's immune system can no longer handle them. They can cause illness, resulting in vomiting, diarrhea, and even food poisoning. Chinese consumers have reported on social media platforms that blind boxes of leftover food have problems such as unappetizing products, poor taste, too short remaining shelf life, and gastrointestinal discomfort after eating them. Other consumers have told the media that online platforms claim to sell food close to the expiration date. But in reality, it is already expired and they don't know how to protect their rights. Given the chaos in China's official food safety management, one can only imagine the risks associated with the blind box food industry. In 2021, China Consumers Association, or CCA, exposed the blind box scam, pointing out that the blind box economy had problems such as excessive marketing, false propaganda, fake and inferior products and difficulty resolving consumer disputes. Some businesses even used blind boxes as a means to eliminate their inventory. CCA proposed strengthening legislative regulations, delineating the red line of blind box operation, prohibiting blind box marketing for young children and certain special commodities, and making clear regulations on blind box prices, sales methods, and probability expressions. As of now, though, there haven't been relevant regulations issued. The U.S. company, KFC, had a story related to this topic and had drawn the CCP's attention. In January 2022, KFC in China and the blind box seller Bubble Mart jointly launched a campaign of blind box combos. It triggered a rush among consumers because according to the rules, the consumer needed to buy at least six meals to collect the whole set of meal toys. For this reason, one customer spent over 10,000 renminbi to buy 106 meals. Another hired help to buy and eat in order to get the blind boxes. China's top official media, The People's Daily, published an article severely criticizing KFC, saying that selling blind boxes in limited quantities is a tactic of hunger marketing. It stimulated consumption and overbuying, resulting in unnecessary food waste. A clear-headed Chinese netizen commented, KFC should not be singled out for blame. The country desperately needs to regulate the blind box industry. One would be too optimistic to consider blind box food as the ceiling for white-collar Chinese to save money on food. China's economy grew by a much lower than expected 0.4% year-over-year in the second quarter, 
That's the official figure, as the real number is probably much worse. For many Chinese, the past day is always better than the future day, and the past year will be better than the future year. In 2022, in addition to expiring foods, food scraps and trimmings are also gaining popularity in China. They become another money-saving treasure in the eyes of young people. This kind of product refers to leftover scraps when making food. The marketing tagline is stock up in bulk in caddy without pain or tasty but inexpensive. The main varieties are dried pork, beef jerky, chopped ham, crushed cookies, bread trimmings, etc. Chinese video bloggers race to produce content comparing the prices of different snack products and their respective products made from scraps and trimmings and recommending stores for their audience. On platforms such as Xiao Hongshu, a social media platform in China that claims to cater to the petite bourgeoisie style, food items made from leftover scraps and trimmings are becoming a trend-setting hot topic taking you to snack freedom and meat-eating freedom. Bloggers have been posting their selections of food scraps, which has become a new gimmick to quickly gain followers. Compared to expiring foods, the safety and security of food scraps are even lower. Consumers don't know where the so-called trimmings come from. Comparatively, formal food manufacturers rarely provide pre-packaged trimmings for sale alone. The circulation of food scraps tends to have unknown manufacturers and unmarked production dates. They are usually produced and sold by lower-level production channels or downstream manufacturers in the food industry, making it challenging to guarantee food safety and quality. Even though the official media in China tries to praise the phenomenon of consuming expiring food and food scraps as valuing food and being environmentally friendly, Chinese netizens have pointed it out correctly. The popularity of food scraps and trimmings reflects the despair and anguish of the Chinese people.